Welcome back. It's time for us to look at the pages of some major newspapers in the country. And we start with the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with applause as Tinubu Fire Service Chiefs dissolves board of agencies. In front of this paper, you find pictures of the newly appointed service chiefs. Uh, Nuhuru Badu is very conspicuous here, probably the most popular among the ones here, if you're not so deeply involved in the workings in the country. Nuhuru Badu may be the only one you probably recognize. But here you have pictures of some of the service chiefs. And moving forward, you have FG Labour fix eight weeks for conclusion of subsidy removal talks. Details of that you can find on page six of this newspaper. Road diversion. Motorist commuters decry on ending sufferings on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Details of that inside of this newspaper, you find it. PEPC, Tinubu APC failed to stop APM's petition. INEX staff recount Beaver's failure. Ethno-religious regional sentiments as Senate seeks principal officers. All of these you have details of when you get the Guardian newspaper. And then on the strip down here, you have Arik Air shareholders trade acquisitions over 120 billion naira alleged fraud. That's a huge one there. All right, that's the much I'll be taking from the front page of the Guardian newspaper. From the Guardian newspaper, we'll move to Business Day newspaper. And Business Day newspaper leads with Disco's plan to buy power from Jenko's heat hurdles. Disco's plan to buy power from Jenko's heat hurdles. Uh, the rider there. New market phase may mean better supply, increased tariff. We'll be taking a look at this in depth this morning, uh, later in the course of the program, as we take our very first hot topic. Nigerians have been asked to brace up for increase in the price of electricity. And so going further on business day, you have analysts expect FX liquidity as CBN lifts dumb account curbs. Tax on diesel imports seen piling pressure on firms. Tax on diesel imports seen piling pressure on firms. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the Business Day newspaper. We'll move forward to the Nation newspaper. And the Nation newspaper leads with Tinubu appoints service chiefs, CDS, NSA, IG, CGC. Forex policy will open floodgate of foreign investments. You find details of that on page four of the Nation newspaper. Above the masthead, you have LP, OB, INEC lawyers clash at tribunal. Subsidy palliatives plan ready August. Subsidy palliatives plan ready August. Now that's the much I'll be taking from the Nation newspaper. From the Nation newspaper, we'll move to Daily Independent, which is leading with Tinubu names Ribadu NSA, Musa CDS, Lagbaja COAS. Uh, let's take a look at the riders there closely. Ogala Neville Chief, Abubakar Air Chief. Ebetoko acting IGP, Adewale acting CG of Customs, Adiza Bala Usman, Special Advisor, approves dissolution of boards of parastatals, agencies, others. Okay, if you look down, you find lesser headlines, petrol subsidy removal. Order stopping NLC TUC from embarking on strike subsists. That's according to court. You have details of that on page 29 of Daily Independent. The riders there, FG Labor resume talks, uh, raise committee on palliatives, salary adjustment for workers. 
So they're still having this discussion. Didn't conclude yesterday. That meeting uh, held yesterday at 4 o'clock, but was inconclusive. Above the masthead, you have exchange rate seen closing 2023 at 700 naira to a dollar. Ogunguber, tribunal strikes out a debutu suit against Abiodun. All right, so that's the much will be taken from the Daily Independent newspaper. And joining us to discuss these headlines this morning, we have our Tuesday analyst in the person of Chris Kendewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He's joining us from Lagos this morning. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. It's nice to be with you this morning. Nice to have you join us. Let's begin with the headline on the Daily Independent. Tinubu names Ribadu NSA, Musa CDS, Lagbaja CAOS. H how did you see this news yesterday when it broke in the evening? It broke in the evening and it was all over the place. Nigerians were talking. How did you receive the news? Yes, not, not to surprise. I'm really surprised there is the swiftness uh, and how the president reacts uh, just barely three weeks after taking up it to uh, change the service chief and uh, definitely he, he has to pay, he has to get put together a team that he can work with uh, the former service chief were uh, appointed by the former president Mamadou Buhari and they will some of them especially the inspector general of police um, have to a large extent exhausted this his term in office, and you can see there was even litigation on why he still remained in the office. So the appointment, uh, though, came uh, a, like a surprise to many, but it was a surprise. I knew that it was coming. The only difference is that we didn't know who and who the president is going to appoint. And um, for starters, uh, this is the most balanced uh, appointment uh, in our military architecture. Since 2015, um, this is a more balanced one. And the president was able to go around, I'm sure, for those he thinks that can uh, do the job, irrespective of where they come from. Uh, that is why you see the national spread in the appointment. The chief of defense staff um, uh, is, uh, is from Kaduna. The air chief is from Kanu. The chief of army staff is from Oshun. Inspector general of police is Ogun State. Chief of uh, naval staff from the south is in Ugu. Um, and and that was that. Um, so it's a, a, a much more balance, unlike uh, what President Muhammad Buhari did within this ten, eight years tenure, where practically all the service chiefs uh, came from one part of the country. And um, a, a place like the South has never had a, a shot at any of the. As the the least mark there for me uh, is it, once again the North Central. Uh, the North Central uh, had no. Uh, I don't know significant uh, person in the Security Council, but it is still okay. Um, but the North Center just as they were shortchanged during the pos uh, positioning in the National Assembly, uh, where of all the uh, four principal officers, it was only the North Center that they get the position. But uh, people are now waiting for the ministers and also uh, committees of the House and the other principal officers out the South uh, North Center whether they'll be able to get something tangible. But for me, this is a well-balanced um, service chief that he has appointed. Yes, it's interesting you're saying it's well-balanced. Um, there are, it's, it's this very uh, news has thrown, uh, brought in a lot of debate. Some are applauding it, some are not. Um, some are questioning the federal character. Some are saying, oh, they do not have enough people from certain parts of the country. But you've alluded that it is balanced. And um, we're waiting for the list of ministers. That would also give us a clearer picture uh, of the direction that this government is going, isn't it? Yes, um, as I said, it's well balanced. Uh, but the only this thing there is just uh, muscle. The appointment of uh, Nuhu Ibadu, retired AIG of police, um, as the national security advisor, would not have that for a very long time. And um, I hope that he'll be able to manage that office as it were, because if it is the, is the clearing house. For security and uh, practically all the service chiefs will be 
um, to the larger extent, in as much as they report directly to the president and commander in chief who appointed, that they'll have to work with the national security advisor, who is going to be coordinating um, authority on security issues. So, um, that is a retired, he's a retired um, police officer. So, whether he's of the army, police, whatever, is another end there. We have seen in the United States, we are not even civilians, we are paid uh, national security advisors, if they see their capital. So, I don't see any problem with that. Yeah, we're not surprised to see that Nuhuru Badu, you know, got appointed. Uh, I mean, we saw him immediately after the elections. We saw him around uh, Mr. Tinubu, you know, before he was sworn in. We saw Nuhuru Badu on uh, different occasions around him. We knew that he was going to be uh, a strong member of this uh, administration. Yes, it, nothing new. Um, he has always been around. Don't forget, several times he also have tried to come uh, to consider the presidency. Yeah, he was once a presidential candidate of mm -hmm. one of the parties. Yeah, then he has always uh, been around president at that. The, the appointment of Dubadu uh, is like that of Dele Alake and also yeah. Bajabi Amila. These yeah. are three people that have been around yeah. the president. Yeah. Wherever you see, uh, so wherever you see president, you always see these three, Bajabi Amila, Dele Alake, and Nuhu. And, 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 so it's obvious that, but let's also put it in context. All of them are going to be, active, be on acting basis until they are confirmed by the Senate of the yeah. Federal Republic of yeah. The Senate has they have to um, confirm them before they can be substantive chief of staff or security chief of their various agencies. It's good you put that context there, though. They've, they've, have we ever seen any list rejected by the Senate in the no. past? Never, <laughs> okay, so it's never, as good as done. <laughs> it's as good as done. done. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's the truth. All right. FG Labor fixed eight weeks for conclusion of subsidy removal talks. Yesterday they had that meeting. What were your expectations from that meeting, Chris? Well, the expectation for me um, included the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the expectation for me included the... The wages, um, right? Looking at the palliatives, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yes, I said the expectations include the um, the, palliative. the palliatives here has been put together by the federal government, and also whether the cost or price of uh, petroleum will be reduced, and um, those were the two major issues. And um, you know that um, the suspect NLC suspended that strike to nineteenth. Again, for them to have a, a discussion with the government, or the, now it has been moved for another eight weeks to give them enough time to discuss. But I believe that uh, the way it's going, um, the petroleum price have come to stay. Um, we don't see people agitating. What we are doing more now is by literally they can't have just to move around. Those that cannot afford it decide to go on buses, and the buses are not even coming cheap. So uh, it has come to stay. But the fact is that. Uh, we have to look at palliatives and also, also forget the NSC is also tabling before the federal government uh, a new salary uh, wage increase at the point where I said that we want 100,000 naira per month, uh, monthly uh, uh, minimum wage. In fact, if I remain that, ask yourself where the federal government is going to get the money from. You say, oh, you get it from the source. But for over two, three years now, so many states cannot even pay 30,000 minimum wage. So where would they get the hundreds of But I'm, I'm sure the negotiation will not happen. Let's see what happens in, uh, in the next eight weeks. As far as I'm concerned, this, that this is a done deal and where the price of oil uh, have come to stay, increase. Yes, well, Labour will also have to uh, look at this new advice that's been given to Nigerians to brace up for electricity, 40% uh, increase. Yes, 40% uh, increase. You know, the, is the federal government has given the discourse the leeway to increase prices um, um, the such, um, that has to be uh, uh, approved by NAC, NERC, uh, uh, National Electric uh, Regulatory uh, Agency. Um, but the fact is that why 40% increase? They've been doing that monthly in the past, but this is the, uh, this is the highest, and I said it, they will give us sorts of a reason. Oh, the prices of um, generating has gone up. The price of transmission has gone up. 
now electricity and they uh, also the the prices of petroleum and other things are but no justification for me uh, for such increase for now because if you look at our system so many um, uh, so many people are still uh, living with the uh, uh, without meters electric meters and that in itself uh, is costing so people a lot um, I know in the past uh, few months how much I'm paying for electricity um, is so much. That's why the fact that I have meters that you cannot imagine um, those that don't uh, that were not meters. So I think the uh, one I would take it that we should increase the capacity. We are just running under 5,000 megawatts um, on, a, on a monthly basis. Mm. That is not enough to serve Nigeria. We should thinking of by now that the discos and jenkos would have increased their capacity increase the capacity of generating and also increase the capacity of distribution. There's nothing seems to be done in this distribution angle. And that is why you see that sometimes you have like, yes, people are saying, oh, we have regular lights now. Yes, to some extent we do. But it's because of the rainy season. Once we're out of the rainy season, it has always been like this all over the, mm. in the country years past. After the rain now, you will be seeing the effect of uh, all this. But the federal government, I, I oh should not just let um, the uh, discourse to just indiscriminately raise the prices of um, electricity. 60% is almost, well, 40% is very high. And I, I heard that it's going to go for about one, one naira per kilobyte. I don't know. I don't know what they, they use, but that to me is very, very crazy. But when you put at it, we look at it, this have been the a petroleum, the increase in price of petroleum, the price of petroleum has increased to close to about 300%. So 40%, Problem uh, from uh, the electric electricity companies, it might just be a far cry for what we have seen in the petroleum sector. Nice. One act for the petroleum, I've said that there is a need for us to build our refinery. Look at Dangote that we'll be shouting and talking about. Mm -hmm. This is almost, almost moving to the end of June. Not a single drop of fuel or petrol has been put into the market by Dangote. I don't know for now how, um, when it's going to come on stream. Then we continue to also continue uh, importing fuels. The more is, the more we import fuel, the more this, because anything happens within the international community, uh, which is going to affect the price of fuel. Because we are seem to be the only country, and I continue to say, we seem to be the only country that exports crude in large quantity and import petroleum. The prices will continue to fluctuate, mm -hmm. uh, except we do the right. And with this issue of uh, electricity, meaning that subsidy will be removed from electricity come July. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, yes. it, subsidy in yes. itself, subsidy in itself is not a bad thing, is it? I mean, countries all over the world subsidize different sectors of their economy to make things easy for the people. But it, it seems like we are looking at a situation where subsidy will be removed from everything and Nigerians will have to pay 100%. Is it not too much? It's too much for Nigerians. I've said before, I say how much is the minimum, minimum wage in Nigeria? Uh, so when you look at that and see the level of unemployment in the country, um, our poverty rate has gone to about 100 and about 130 million Nigerians under, uh, you know, under the threshold of uh, poverty. One of the highest in the world that Nigeria has been termed as poverty, uh, which term do they normally use again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nigeria, inflation is already at 22 points. Uh, it's been projected to be 30 percent. The level of inflation, besides the banks are increasing their interest rates uh, on loans, and those are the areas I, I thought that before you do all this subsidy or no subsidy, all the necessary things need to be put in place. You don't just now even uh, some of the goods uh, we are getting double taxation on some of the goods we buy. The states are taxing you. The, you go out to now, you go out, you see if I will disturb you, oh, we bring this, bring that, bring that. You travel, you are going out of the out of Lagos State from each of the states, you see all these agbiros stopping you, putting nails under your tire and say, we have to pay so, so, so. You know, this level of, that is what I just believe that. Good I know the president has set up an economic council uh, led by the vice president. I hope that that um, um, council should be able to come up with something reasonable to how to move the economy and also to reduce some of the burdens that are upon Nigeria so far. But it has not been easy, and has not been, which is the reason you see a lot of people are doing jackpot. On a daily basis, people would rather go to even Libya here 
I to go and be doing many jobs rather than say in Nigeria. You see, you saw the story that when they were uh, making the round about those three boys that were sent to um, Cyprus by by um, uh, by a pastor, a G of a particular, and the boys have said the pastor said that they should come back that he's going to um, fund the education either in Nigeria or they say, sir, thank you for helping us, but we are not coming back to Nigeria. And that's the attitude of most Nigerians now when they're traveling. You know, economic reforms are inevitable. There's no doubt about that, especially with the kind of situation that President Tinubu met on ground when he came into power. But we are hoping that the palliatives will be put in such a way that Nigerians will not suffer as we see playing out. Because the way the prices of things are going up, uh, I don't know how much Nigerians can take at this point in time. But we're also hoping for the stabilization so that eventually... Uh, market forces will bring down the prices of things, isn't it? Yes, that, you, you hit the nail on the head. That is the way to go. So um, that's why I say that the president will be able to put down. The, anyway, also, he, very soon now, he's going to constitute his cabinet because those are going to, that, the cabinet is going to, be, going to be the engine room of driving the economy. Uh, it depends on who is going to make uh, economic advisor. Who is going to make? Although he, I, I, I think he has an economic advice. We are talking of the minister of finance um, and the minister in charge of various key agencies and ministry in the country. That's, those also will help the president to be able to drive his agenda. But I know that the president during his campaign has his uh, manifesto, and there was promises that he made to Nigerians. Uh, I think it's high time for him to start uh, looking at ways of implementing the bet. Uh, I, I, from the onset, I said I didn't put it to the president. We kind of debt portfolio that inherited from President Muhammad Bari. Anybody that takes over the, the affairs of this country, we have to swim and swim to be able to get out of the mess that we're in. But I hope that the president is up to the task. Yeah, he, he says he is up to the task. He says he knew what he was coming into and he wouldn't give us excuses. Well, since we're talking about electricity, the headline on Business Day is something to mention here. Disco's plan to buy power from Genco's heat hurdles. Well, you know, I said it before. I said the, the, everything is left. I don't know. I don't have um, uh, enough information on that. So I might not be able to speak um, Actually, but the fact remains that part of the problem we're having is that they are generating more than we can distribute. Most of them generate enough, um, at times we generate about 6,000, 7,000 mega, um, but the national grid cannot take more than 5,000. So you now ask yourself, well, what happened to the waste? And that is why I said, over how many years now, going to about 15 years now, these schools have not made any investment in distribution. All they just do is that collect from the Jenkos, pay them, and try to distribute. We have to increase our capacity. If you're going to even pump anything into the, the uh, distribution uh, uh, channel, you are going to you must open up the capacity. What we have now cannot take, according to what I have from this, I cannot take more than 5,000. So even if you get, but if the, um, uh, those generators generate up to 20,000 or 10,000, you can only uh, pass on what you can, the, this thing can be able to take, which is mm. less than 5,000. So, uh, so this now they are saying the new market phase, um, um, I don't know what they mean by new market phase, but I, uh, this um, uh, distribution companies take more delight in increasing um, tariffs on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, without having adequate uh, increment in how they build. Some, some areas in Lagos are very lucky. Uh, for now, because some areas are getting as much as about 14, 15 hours electricity daily, which is an improvement. But if you go to the rural areas, some other states, they are not that lucky. Will the recent signing into law of the Electricity Act solve this problem of grid? This uh, inability to distribute? Uh, well, I, hope, I hope it does. I hope it does. You know, the mistake. When the federal government um, sold, uh, practically uh, privatized um, the electricity sector, we, are, we didn't get the right people to buy up um, uh, the, what is known as PHCN or um, NEPADEN. We didn't get it because most of them that bought, they went on borrowing, they borrowed money to buy. It's not that they have the capacity hmm. to be able to, and they've been saying that's what we are the problem we're having now. Most of the people that bought up um, the PHN 
and rename it like the Eco Electricity, Ikeja Electricity, um, uh, is it Benin Electricity, and the Nugu Electricity. We have the Abuja Electricity. They don't have the financial because the essence of privatizing was for them to bring you from 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 outside. Okay, get investors to invest. But you see that most of them went just to borrow money from Nigerian banks. And that is why they're having issues. The one in Abuja, I think one of the, the um, banks have taken over that of Abuja. Uh, one of the banks have taken because they are not, they've not been able to pay back the loans they pay. So a, a particular bank has taken over. So that is the problem we have. We didn't have much, much of due diligence in selecting um, those that those things were sold to. It was more like a party party thing at the end of it. So that is why we ended where we are. So my own is that we cannot continue to increase um, the, the electricity tariff on it before it now it should increase by 40 percent the next one they're going to increase will be by 80 percent and the government doesn't do anything and we are the mercy of this uh this course and it's bad enough wow. okay let's move on to some other issues in the daily we'll go to the daily independent well the daily independent Order stopping NLC TUC from embarking on strike subsists. That's the court. Yeah, the case is still in court. And, and um, the courts, uh, you know, that um, the court at uh, the last sitting asked um, the NLC to, NLC to suspend that strike and, uh, and um, pending uh, a ruling of the case brought before by the federal government. And um, what will the, um, the court has done is just extend that uh, 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 that instruction and, uh, that they already gave to the NLC and it to another date. So for now, the court, the federal government is using the court to untwist the labor union. And I hope that it's smart enough that negotiation with the government, um, the Nigerians are, are, are running out of patience with what is happening. And, um, I go by the eight weeks window that they have, they could put a final discussion to issue relating to the increase in petrol. But I hope now that the electricity has uh, come into the fray that electricity will also form part of the discussion, not just petrol again, mm. because that is another key sector that the, uh, um, the labor union should be looking at. Good enough, uh, the president of, uh, of NLC currently, um, Colonel, uh, um, Comrade uh, Ajero, used to be the president of the electricity uh, workers. So he knows, he knows so much about the issue of electricity. Mm. But I would think that that should also be into the fray. So that Nigerians, we, Nigerians are already suffering. Adding more burden to us is like a, a just putting a, a jackboot on the neck of Nigerians, and Nigerians are finding it very difficult to breathe now, uh, if you understand what I mean. I understand. I'm in Nigeria, in Nigeria with you. Well, LPOB and INEC lawyers clashed at the tribunal. Yes, the, the clash is the, it was on the issue of, um, um, of the use of the beavers and so on. And the INEC representative um, was, um, they didn't agree with the submission of um, the, the Labour Party lawyers and um, they were believing that there, there was no glitches um during the presidential election as being canvassed by the lawyers uh of um the labor party uh, presidents but everybody knows the fact that um everybody knows the fact that they are they, they are glitches because um the during the there was no direct transmission of the results of the presidential election all others were able to transmit uh, that very debate. That of when it come, when it came to the presidential election, there was not uh, result transmission uh, via the beavers, and that was all the problem. Is. They were saying, "Oh, they are having glitches. They are having problem to transmit to and rest of them." That in itself um, was so suspicious. But everybody knew that that was that something was wrong. But at the later again, I next said, "No, there's no time." Uh, that they said that there would be transmission of results. Um, um, on the, through that platform on the day of election. But the national chairman of INEC told Nigerians time and time again that as the as people are voting that you have a direct transmission. So it was the double speak. Uh, the INEC chairman was speaking from both sides of his mouth. But um, so the firework is on at the tribunal of the court. And uh, let's see how that pans out. So 
what the necessary evidence because in law what we work with is evidence what we work with is evidence if you don't have the evidence to be able to prove your case then you lose it so if the labor party have the necessary evidence then they have, they have to put it before the court the same thing with the, um, with the uh, pdp presidential team if they have any evidence they have to put it before the court but all eyes on the court now because the 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 uh, judiciary too seems to be um uh, how how would i put that at a crossroad now if you listen to uh, what happened where the senator uh, what he said about his wife who was the former president of the court of appeal that he influenced certain judgments in favor of some of his colleagues that was damaging that's why the fact that the former president of the court of appeal has denied it i think that the ngc and the nba should look at that case as it went it was very very damaging a very and, damaging um, and they should be able to tell nigerians what they yeah. Very, very damaging. Yeah, very, very damaging. In fact, very damaging to the career of the woman. And some Nigerians have called for a review of all the judgment that she gave, especially within the period when her husband yeah. was in that house. Well, Chris yes. Kendewando, thank you so much for your time on the program today. Chris Kendewando is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. Thank you for your time as always, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Have a nice day. You too. All right, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to give you weather report, and then we'll come back with our very first hot topic. Stay with us.